So I've been poking at game design for a while, and I figured, you know what I should do? I should make a video game every week in July. And since no one's officiating the self-imposed rules of this challenge, I have decided to start on July negative 4th. So that gives me about a week to build the game and then drum a pipe for it with videos like this one. Uh, I would recommend gi giving it a try before I go into detail of behind the scenes. Obviously that's going to spoil a lot of the game. So give it a try. The link's right down below. It's itch. You can play it in your browser. I sense your presence here. A higher order interface of bones and nerve designed to grace our world. You that is slave to the gamer who plays. It, you can spend money on it, but it, you can also just play it for free if you want. Uh, if you want me to make more games and make more video content, uh, toss me a dollar. But uh, w without further ado, uh, let's get into how to make a game of the back rooms in one week. First things first, the video is a lie. The concept itself is a lie. Like Game jams themselves are all farcical in nature because it's not you're not really building the thing in a week, you're you're working with functionally an, an immense number of engineers and other producers who have made it possible to make this game in a week, and not just that, but also like your your own like sort of development process. It, it's going to come from the prior experience that you've had creating games. So you're you're not really making a game in a week, although you can, but you're you're really you're making a game using all the experience that you've accrued over however much time you happen to have spent working with Unity or other engines in the past. That's not to say, of course, that you can't build this game in a week. I believe just about anyone could build a game quite like this in a week, and to do that. Uh, you really just need a couple of things. Uh, one of the things you need is some, just some basic Unity knowledge, like how the how the application works, how to open it up, how to start a new file. Like there's there's a bunch of tutorials that cover like the super basics of Unity out there. I'm willing to willing to bet that there's a bunch of them that would be perfectly serviceable in this uh, particular avenue. Uh, next thing you need is some pro builder and some pro grids. These are things that are basically hidden behind two mouse clicks and make Unity far more capable of producing rapidly usable levels. Uh, basic blender knowledge is essential. Wouldn't have been able to, uh, I guess, spoilers for the game, wouldn't have been able to create a weird critter chasing you around if it wasn't for some, some basic blender knowledge. I, Made him out of blender, and as as well as like the other props that you can kind of find uh, around the map. Uh, how to port blender models over is obviously essential as well, since you in order to get them into the game, you have to take them from blender into Unity. Most of that involves converting it into an FBX file and just sort of dragging it into the assets of the Unity application. But again. There are a lot of far more in-depth tutorials. This is, a, this is a very basic sort of overview. Uh, next is how to add audio files. You'll want to be able to add audio files to your game in order to have your monster speak in, uh, in, in a beautiful whispered hush voice and follow you around the map. Uh, after that... You need it's same thing in order to in order to get the monster to follow you around the map. You need some rudimentary AI knowledge, and I'm talking like 
messing with like settings and checking a few boxes in, in accordance to a tutorial level of rudimentary AI knowledge. Like all of the work I think for this has pretty much been done on the back end by people far more talented than me when it comes to how these programs and how these things work. I'm a writer. I write things. And thanks to a whole bunch of effort by a whole bunch of people, I can now write things that chase after you instead of just sit on a page. So uh, this is the evolution of books, people. We're looking at the future of books and essays. Uh, how to export as a WebGL. Uh, that's for if you want to play it in a browser, which I think is a lot more approachable than having to download a file and launch an executable. Even if that executable comes with a secret bonus lore poem hidden in the files. Uh, don't look that. Don't click on it. Don't look at it. Uh, moving on to the next one. Actually, wait, no. Forget it. Don't move on to the next one. Unmove on to the next one. Back to the WebGL thing. I thought this was going to be way harder than it is. Turns out it's actually as easy as just kind of turning on a setting in Unity. Again, there's tutorials that let you follow you through on like exactly what you need to do. Look those up. Follow those. Shouldn't be more than five to ten minutes tops. And it does all... Again, it's one of those things where like so many people have put effort into making it do all of this work for you so that you can just focus on the the output making it an interesting experience uh yeah next is how to remove mesh colliders that's how i got the transparent or translucent uh property in the wall at the end of the game so that you can like kind of run through it into the the credits room and also fall through the uh the sort of black roof of the credits room spoilers for the credits room there's a credits room Somewhere that can be... Can you find it? Can you find the wall that you can walk through? Hmm. Click the game to find out. But anyway. Need to, need to be able to remove mesh colliders? Uh, that, that is as easy as checking a box. Or rather, unchecking a box. So that there aren't any collisions for it. And the final big one is... Acquire player controller. You can build these. These can be created... I personally purchased mine on a sale at the the Unity store. I like honestly for first time game developers would recommend similar because here's here's a crazy thing. Freaking first person controls require the use of four dimensional mathematics a lot of the time. There there's a thing called quaternions that sounds borderline made up. When I heard it the first time, I thought, "Oh, that's 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 a goofy imaginary thing. Video game development? That's crazy. Four dimensions? What is that? The hypercube? Is this cube two hypercube? But no, it, uh, it uses four dimensional mathematics. Uh, I do not know yet. I don't yet know four dimensional math. I like, maybe if this career takes off, uh, I might learn four dimensional math one day. That could be pretty cool. Uh, buy my game and <laughs> then we'll see but uh, yeah no the, it's it's one of those things that like I, I guarantee you there's probably there's, there's, there's well, yeah I know there's loads of tutorials out there on how to like build these controllers for yourselves and you can do it you have the ability to do it I have not myself I just acquired one and it's again it's one of those things where with with artwork with with video game development as a whole like just gamut of things how much of this is something you need to make versus how much of this is something you're content to allow other people to produce for you and for you to use i think any any sort of bespoke game mechanics they're going to be a little beyond me personally because i i am genuinely interested in the the ref, the further refinement and production of walking simulator style games i think they're and i've touched on this in prior projects i think they speak to a future 
that involves the natural evolution of the essay that basically allows the the spoken word essay to be immersed in an environment that further fosters it. So I guess huge spoilers for the game. You should definitely play it before I get into this detail. But I, I think I I got into some I got t- I got to touch onto some topics as to like why I think the back rooms are as resonant as they are, and implement that into the the sort of game like quote unquote narrative or narration within the game and uh, i've i found i've personally found that fascinating i found it fascinating to make i hope you found it fascinating i hope you enjoyed your time with it uh i i hope to make more games i want to i want to go like all july like i said i'm making five games this july so go ahead go ahead and subscribe i because uh, just, there's going to be more content and play my game because there's already existing content that you haven't consumed consume ha ha ha